Hello, everybody. It's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today, we are starting our third unit in the curriculum, and that is on cellular energetics. All right, so we're going to be covering three main things in this unit. One is going to be what you're seeing in front of you, enzymes, what they are, how they work, uh, what changes how they work. Um, we're going to be talking about photosynthesis, and we're going to be talking about cellular restoration. Those are the big three topics um, in this unit. And in fact, they're big three topics in the entire curriculum, and they always come up throughout the entire year. Here. Um, so this is a this is an important unit. I think this has a pretty um, substantial weight on the exam as well. So let's get into it because enzymes are super interesting and they're super duper important for uh, how life works. Um, so let's get into it. What exactly are they? All right. I mentioned uh, in a previous video here that life itself is just kind of well. When you really get down to it, I don't mean to get existential over here, but when you get down to it, life itself is just super duper complicated chemical reactions, all right? Everything that's ever happened inside of the living thing is the result of a conformational change of a protein reacting with something else, binding to something else, and causing da 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 da, -da um, in a mind-bogglingly mind complex um, array of different reactions. And uh, all of these reactions enable life, all right? Um, and these reactions have to happen when and where we want them to in order for us to continue to be living things. Life, all life, has to control their chemical reactions. And that's what they do with enzymes. None of those can happen without enzymes. Um, so what exactly are they? They are proteins, all right? So uh, we mentioned in unit one that proteins have all sorts of functions, um, a ridiculously complex array of, uh, of functions and different structures that you can have for a protein. We can't even wrap our minds around it. And a large group of those are enzymes and those are proteins that act as biological catalysts now if you've taken a chemistry class before um a lot of times chemistry is a prerequisite for ap biology um a catalyst is any type of substance that speeds up a reaction okay it makes it happen faster and living things can use these enzymes use these catalysts to make sure they uh reactions happen when and where the living thing needs them to in order to continue living. So it, I put up here, it mediates, it's mediating reactions in living things. Um, and here's the thing about enzymes. This uh, purple image down here is an enzyme and this uh, blue blobby thing up here is what's going to bind to that enzyme. I'm just gonna show you what that is here in just a second. Um, but the shape of an enzyme and the structure of an enzyme is crucial to its function. So this is another big, 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 big theme in biology is that the way something is structured enables it to do its function, all right? And we're gonna find out how, just how true that is um, with enzymes, all right? But check out, check it out, this, uh, this, the shape of this enzyme, this wiggly part right here is ultra mega important when it comes to uh, what that enzyme does. All right, as I said before, enzymes, quote unquote, speed up reactions by lowering what's called activation energy, all right? Certain, uh, certain reactions require a certain amount of energy for them to begin. A lab that I like to do with my uh, regular biology class is one that, that um, contains catalase, all right? Catalase is an enzyme found in the liver, right? And uh, what catalase does, it breaks down hydrogen peroxide. You might know hydrogen peroxide is like an antiseptic cleaner type thing. You put it on a wound, it bubbles up, and it like cleans your wound, right? And that, and that's, that's great. Um, however, peroxide is a byproduct of, uh, of cellular respiration, and it needs to be cleaned up. It needs to be converted into uh, some safer compounds. All right, so if you pour hydrogen peroxide into a beaker, nothing happens, right? But as soon as you add a little piece of liver to it, the liver, the enzymes in that liver cause the reaction to happen very quickly. All right, and what that's, uh, what that's doing here is not just, I guess, like, it is making the reaction happen. It doesn't participate in the reaction, which means the enzyme is still there after the reaction is complete. Um, but it basically enables that reaction to happen and makes sure the energy required to begin that reaction is low enough, all right? So check out this graph over here. This is what you're gonna see a lot of times when talking about enzymes, all right? Um, the energy used to start a reaction without an enzyme, as you can see way up here, is much higher than if you would use an enzyme, okay? So the amounts of energy that is required to do a reaction is greatly lowered um, when there's an enzyme present, all right? You still get from the product A plus B to AB, so 
this might be a dehydration synthesis reaction, um, but you're still going to use less energy in order to get that to begin. All right, and this is what enzymes do, and that is critically, critically important uh, for the functioning of living things. All right, it makes sure that the energy required is lower. It still gets you from point A to point B, right? So here's a metaphor I like to use, right? Without an enzyme, say if you got a bike up the hill, all right, you're still going to get from one side to the other, except you got to use a little more energy. You got to put a, a little more oomph to get there. Okay. And then uh, if you use an enzyme, it just kind of like lowers, it flattens the hill a little bit. All right. You can still get from uh, one side to the other, except you don't have to climb quite so high and you don't have to exert quite as much energy. That's what enzymes do. All right. We like to say enzymes speed up reactions, uh, but they really just kind of make it so that it doesn't require as much energy. It provides a nice environment for a reaction to take place. All right, so as I put up here, enzymes enable living things metabolism. And uh, metabolism, in case you don't know what that is, I'm sure you've heard that word before. Like, I, got, I can max out an entire frozen pizza. I got a high metabolism. Like, okay. Uh, metabolism is a more fancy word for uh, all the chemical reactions that happen within a living thing, right? So uh, as I said before, life itself is just complicated chemical reactions, right? So metabolism is a big, big topic. Um, it usually has to do with like, all right, what food do you intake and how does your body break it down and then reassemble those pieces into uh, compounds that your cells are going to use, okay? And enzymes enable that to happen, okay? Make sure that, uh, well, all of those reactions can happen when and where that we want them to. Um, and it allows cells to, quote unquote, choose when reactions take place. All right, so uh, here's a good example of an enzyme that I talk about a lot in my class. This is lactase. It's a well, very, very well studied enzyme. Lactase sounds a lot like lactose, right? Um, lactose, as you might know, is a sugar in, uh, is a carbohydrate that you would find in milk. And more specifically, lactose is a disaccharide. Um, so that's a unit one callback right there. A disaccharide, it means it's got two, it's a carbohydrate with two rings of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen there. Okay, um, in the hydrolysis of lactose, all right, um, when, it, when you break down lactose, all right, you can get two, one disaccharide into two monosaccharides, galactose, and my, I'm blocking it a little bit, but glucose, all right, and lactase enables this hydrolysis to happen. See, there's the water molecule that's going to break that covalent bond between the two, right? Um, so lactase only enables this reaction here, okay? It doesn't enable any other reaction in the entirety of, you know, metabolism, any other reaction ever. Lactase is going to do its one job and one job only. Um, and let's just say, all right, let's just say um, I go vegan here and I never have any lact lactose ever again. I never have any dairy products, cheese. I could never, I, I'm from Wisconsin. I can't live without cheese. Um, but let's just say I never have any dairy products ever again. I never consume any lactose ever again. Am I going to need lactase? Am I going to need this reaction to happen? No, not necessarily, right? So uh, cells can, can, can choose when this reaction is going to happen or not um, using their enzymes, all right? And this is how an enzyme works. This is a pretty simple schematic that I found all right, uh, this bluish thing down here is an enzyme and it's got a funky shape to it. All right, you can see the, the surface of this has a funky shape to it. Um, and these two things up here, the red and the yellow uh, molecules up here, those are what are called substrates. All right, and those are the basically the products, or excuse me, those are the reactants that go into a reaction. Okay, uh, so again, if you study chemistry before, what's on the left side of the equation is called the reactants. Uh, what's on the right side or the other side of the arrow is what's called the product, right? So the substrates are what we call the, the reactants in an enzymatic reaction. And we call them a substrate because they bind to the enzyme, okay? And the, the, the wiggly part that I was talking about before that has a weird, very weird shape to it, it was called the active site. So the substrates bind to the active site of the enzyme, okay? And when they bind together, all right, they form, they're, 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 they're bound together. Remember, the enzyme is made of amino acids, right? So it has charged and nonpolar and polar groups that are going to be able to latch onto those substrates in a very uh, distinct way. When they're bound together, it's called the enzyme substrate complex, all right? It just means they're bound together like that, okay? And then the enzyme makes the reaction happen, all right? Once those substrates are bound to the enzyme, all right? And it basically enables it, lowers the activation energy, and enables that reaction to happen. And what you get as a result are the products, okay? So this, uh, this molecule right here is a product. We can assume uh, the uh, enzyme allowed for the dehydration synthesis of these two monomers into a dimer uh, or like a disaccharide, for example. Okay. Um, and here's my, here's my try at animating, uh, you know, this is my first time at this. So give me a break if it's not, you know, 
if it's not perfect. I did my best, all right? I'm not an artist or an animator, really, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying something new here. All right, so here's my, uh, here's my illustration of how this works. All right, this is an enzyme over here. Here's my substrates. All right, I'm going to show you how this works once again. Okay, um, the substrates, what they are going to do, they're going to bind to the active site. I didn't label that on here, but this is called the active site of the enzyme where the substrates bind. Okay, and it forms this uh, enzyme substrate complex, all right, when they're bound together like that. Okay, and then a reaction happens, all right? Uh, so let's just say we use some dehydration synthesis to take those two monomers and make it into a dimer here. And once the reaction is completed, okay, it forms a product. And now notice the enzyme is still there. The enzyme doesn't get consumed in the reaction. It's not destroyed or made into something else. So enzymes, this is a key point here, enzymes are reusable, right? So uh, this enzyme, let's just go back here, this enzyme can be used to catalyze yet another reaction, okay? It can be reused again um, in order to make another reaction happen. So that's pretty cool about enzymes that they're reusable. They're not consumed in a reaction, okay? Um, so here's the th last thing I want you to know about enzymes before you move on is that they only catalyze one reaction. I kind of mentioned this before with lactase, right? Lactase is never going to cause the dehydration synthesis of, I don't know, two amino acids or something like that, or two nucleotides, whatever. It only causes the hydrolysis of lacto lactose, the, the sugar in milk, the disaccharide in milk, into the monosaccharides, galactose and glucose, okay? And why is that only ever going to, that one reaction only ever going to happen? There's some circumstances where some enzymes can do different stuff, but generally speaking, enzymes only do one reaction, right? Uh, the shape and the charge of the active sites where the substrates bind must be compatible with the intended surface. Now, remember, enzymes are proteins, right? And they're made of very complicated folded up chains of amino acids. And those amino acids have different R groups that are charged, polar, nonpolar, etc. Um, so the uh, chemical interactions, like the nonpolar interactions, the hydrogen bonding, whatever, uh, between the substrates and the enzyme needs to be very, very important. All right, this is what we often call a lock and key model. All right, a key only can open one door pretty much, right? Most keys, unless you have like a master key or something like that to a building, if you're a custodian or something. Um, but I digress, right? Uh, a key only in intended to open one door, right? It's specifically made for that one lock, right? Um, and that's kind of how you can think of an enzyme and its substrates. All right, they only combine, the active site only fits for those particular substrates. All right, so to recap, in case you missed anything or I missed anything, enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions in living things by lowering activation energy, the energy required to start the reaction. It speeds them up, yes, but it just makes it easier for those reactions to initiate in the first place. Enzymes enable metabolism in living things by regulating when and where reactions take place. All right, life itself is just complicated reactions and they are enzyme mediated. Okay. Enzymes are mega, mega important, um, and they enable all the different types of reactions. We can choose when and where they happen. Um, the charge and the shape of the active site, which is the part that the substrates bind to, must be compatible with its substrate. Enzymes typically only catalyze one reaction, right? So the substrates bind to the active site. Um, a reaction It forms the enzyme substrate complex. The reaction takes place and releases the product or products in case it's a hydrolysis reaction. Um, yeah. Um, when substrates bind to the active site, it forms an enzyme substrate complex before releasing its products. All right, and something I want to add here, all right, let's see if I can uh, add my marker, okay? It's a uh, re, oh, you can, can't read my handwriting that well. It's reusable, all right? Enzymes are not consumed in a reaction. That's something important to know. All right, that is it for this video. We're going to talk more about enzymes in the next topic. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you next time.